Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. And today myself and Toaster, <laughs> if she ever waves, <laughs> we're going to uh, Kilcooley Abbey today. Uh, hopefully the rain holds off and hopefully I get to fly a drone. Now we're just after passing through Freshford and Kilkenny, which to be fair has some extremely nice views all around it and they have a little walking track here and stuff. But like, look at that. I know, it's very pretty, very pretty. Um, if you're wondering about the camera setup, I'm still trying to figure out which camera I want to leave on the front. A lot of people are actually liking the 360 cam on the very front, so I might end up leaving that there, we'll see. And we are on the greatest bike ever made, for two people. <laughs> that might be a bit of a claim, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's the greatest bike ever made that I currently own for it. There we go. Anyway, Kilcooley Abbey has a kind of a, a pretty rich history, nothing mad exciting like uh, the last kind of uh, grill explorers we did which was at Granny Castle. I'll leave a link up there for that one if you want to see it. Um, and it's also been quite a while since Toaster was out on the bike with us so that's pretty cool that she uh, has finally come back out on the bike again for an hour spin. Um, but Kilcooley Abbey basically originally kind of happened uh, due to some lands being donated in 1182 um, by Donal Moore to the Cistercians. Now the Cistercians are the same crowd that built Jer the likes of Jerpoint Abbey. So Kilcooley Abbey back in the day would have been quite an important centre uh, for some monkage carry on as well, you know, like what whatever monks did at the time. They all did, they just monked about and did things, um, writing scriptures and doing some learnings and whatnot, and praying I suppose. But, 1182 anyway, and about two years later the original abbey was um, actually built and in operation. Now the same guy who did a lot of the carvings uh, eventually at Jerpoint, uh, whose name I'll put on the screen because I can't recall it, um, he actually did some of the carvings and stuff that, uh, that you can see here at Kilcooley. Now, why that's important is because I, I don't know, they're pretty They're pretty cool and pretty historically relevant. Now, Kilcooley, personally, when we get there, you'll see, uh, in my opinion, is not maintained to the level that it really should be uh, by the OPW, and it is in the OPW's care. So I think that's just one of many misses the OPW have. Um, you know, the likes of Jerpoint. And I, again, right there, that's another complete example of why OPW are kind of letting the side down. That actually should be maintained. That's a cool little spot, Ballylerkin Church. It's very, very old. Uh, and still actually in, you know, it's not fallen down yet, but currently sheep are allowed in and around it. But, you know, that's not the farmer's fault, it's his field. OPW should come and buy that little plot of land off him and anyway, that's the way it goes. So, Toaster there behind us uh, actually mm, kind of is from roughly this area originally. So she's going to direct us to Kilcooley. I have cycled out here before on my uh, non-motorized bicycle. Hello, but uh, I, I can't remember the way exactly, so we'll, we'll require some direction. Anyway, um, so the important thing is, anyway, the original original structure we won't be able to see because it was uh, first burnt in, I, believe, I think it was 1416, anyway, the early, or 1418 maybe it was, actually. Um, so you're talking 600 years ago, there, thereabouts, uh, was, it was originally burnt. So 1182, was when that original structure was constructed, or well, started construction. Uh, and 1418, it was burned, and then it was actually pretty much destroyed by fire in uh, the 1440s, 1445, I think. Uh, I'll correct myself on screen with any major differences. A couple of years doesn't really matter here or there. Um, but it was actually rebuilt under the abbot at the time, um, whose name is really hard to pronounce. But anyway, he it was rebuilt under his kind of. Um, oversight and then in the late 1500s I think 1560 um, basically the Cistercians kind of dissolved that abbey and the site had been uh, handed over at that point to um, the Duke of Ormond or the Duke of Thomas Butler uh, who was the Duke of Ossery slash Ormond at the time um, now he let the, the monks come back uh, after afterwards so there were, a mo there were a sect of monks that is unknown there definitely was just some living there doing their thing when he sold uh, the estate to um, I think Alexander something Alexander Jerome Alexander uh, and the monks were kind of gonzo af after that 
because Mr. Alexander, I don't think, was a Catholic. Now, after that, the Catholics kind of kicked up a fuss in the 1600s, 16, early 1600s, and uh, the Cistercians actually returned to the site due to, due to this kind of rebellion in 1621-ish. Uh, so they move back in, and obviously the, the structure that's currently there is actually since um, you know the rebuild. So you're, you're talking the, the structure we're going to see is still 500, 600 years old. That's a cool little tree tunnel, isn't it? I always love it, an old tree tunnel. I like this road actually. It's it's not a road you can go fast on because you'd probably die if you met a car or a tractor. But it's a nice it's a nice road technically. We go right here. Which way is better? But anyway, so the Cistercians moved back in after the um, the Catholic uprising, we shall call it, a rebellion, uh, which was, like I said, 1620s. Now, they were eventually kind of fully displaced in 1650 by our old friend on this channel, and I use friend in the complete opposite sense of the word, Mr. Cromwell. That's Oliver Cromwell, who was not a good person by, um, you know, Irish people's standards. He was not a nice guy. Uh, we don't like him, and I would advise you to look up unbiased history of him if you're someone who thinks he was a great guy. Um, it's not a dig at anyone in particular, I am friends with everyone here on the channel, um, but if you do think he was a really good guy, do please look up some unbiased history. Uh, obviously he had positives for where he was from, which was England, or the UK, whatever you want to call it, uh, but he definitely had a hell of a lot of negatives for anyone who wasn't his people. So do, I would, I just, just go look up some unbiased history. I haven't been on a road of grass in the middle of a long time. I know some people love this stuff. <laughs> it's grand, it's just you're very limited to, to riding on the very, very left. Well, you know, this is the reality. If you come to Ireland and ride a bike and you want to see the sights, you're going to have to see some uh, dodgy sections of road like this. But just take your time. That's all you need to do. Anyway, um, eventually the site was sold again. I, I think in the late 1600s it was sold. And eventually, in the 18th century, um, Kilcooley House was built, which is about yeah, about a half a kilometre, 500, 400, 500 metres away from the actual site of the abbey. And it's remained um, in the hands of those that family, I believe, since. Now, it could have changed hands since then. But one thing I do want to mention is, you know, my family, historically, um, one half of my family are from that area, uh, historically. And that loc the family that owned the house at the time in the uh, early 1800s when we had the, the famine here in Ireland, uh, they were known to be very good to the locals um, in trading, you know, the likes of work for food. So that's a cool castle there as well. You can actually stay in there. That's an Airbnb now, which is pretty cool. But um, it's one thing I just wanted to mention, and that's another old site there. Honestly, it's you could just ride around here and you get old sites absolutely everywhere. But yeah. The one, that's something I wanted to mention is just from a local's perspective and this is something that was handed down as kind of common family knowledge uh, that the people who did own that estate at the time who were Protestants, uh, English Protestants were very good to the local people um, back in the day uh, during the famine so that's something I do feel is worth mentioning as a lot of the time you know either history either focuses completely on the bad or completely on the good but there's no, there's no things where you know a family like that tried to tried to play up obviously to the the rulers that they had uh, without upsetting them too much but also tried to you know not let a lot of people starve to death because that's a pretty pretty terrible thing to do um, so I do feel it's worth mentioning so Kilcooley Abbey uh, the way it stands today and you'll see it when we get there um, is uh, uh, it's a ruin uh, it is in the care of OPW and I don't think they're doing a great job of uh, maintaining it and the grounds um, Kilcooley Abbey itself, of course, is what's in the care of the state. Uh, Kilcooley House, I believe, is still privately owned. And there is still a church out here, which I believe is a Protestant church. Uh, not that that really matters, it's just it's a much newer site. I get a bit of lick of speed on here now. But um, that's something just just worth mentioning as well, the Kilcooley, Kilcooley House, uh, I believe is still lived in, so just have a bit of respect if you do come visit the site, as it is a private estate, um, but they do allow access into uh, the Abbey. So you can come and view the Abbey, and there is a kind of a little 
forested walkway, the valley in. That way. Cows, look at them all. Hello. Hello. And a pigeon, don't shit on me, thank you. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, basically, you can enter into the estate up to a point uh, to go and view the abbey, which is very worthwhile doing because like I said, there's a lot of reliefs in there, a lot of carvings. Um, dating back uh, quite a long way older than some countries so definitely worth a visit we will be flying the drone I have the drone here with me um, if the wind allows uh, to see some overheads and when we get there we'll actually go in and walk around the area as well so that you can see it um, and uh, yeah hopefully hopefully um, you stick with us until we get there and have a look there's also uh, an area called the crag not far from it which is a kind of a forest what do you call it? A walking area. And the cool thing about the crag, which I think is right, literally over there, you won't be able to see it through the ditch probably, or the hedge or whatever you want to call it. Um, but the crag is a, is a really cool walkway because it goes up onto the hill, and up on the hill there's a little thing called a folly that someone just built. It's like a fake little castle. Uh, back in the day they built that. I think that's the folly up there actually, I think you can see it. But uh, from the folly, which overlooks the entire area here um, you actually do have uh, a, a view of Kilcooley um, which when you see it is really cool because if you think back to when it was originally built this whole area would have been still heavily forested and uh, it's very much oh look at that lovely it's very much um, would have been really a prominent area back in the day so you know if you were someone looking for it and you got up on that hill and looked down it would have been cool to see it. It would have been like, oh, that's a super impressive area. Oh. We're going left. <laughs> a bit of warning. <laughs> I it's all right. Uh, everyone, toaster made, her, made us break that out. Blame her. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, it would have been a very impressive site back in the day. And uh, one thing I have not mentioned is Kilcooley Estate itself is actually walled. So the whole area is walled. When You'll see the start of the wall when we get there. And uh, the wall runs the entire way around the place, uh, which is, again, very cool. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll put it on the screen if it was the case. But I think that um, the walls might have been built as part of that uh, work for food dealio back in the day uh, for the famine actually if you're one of the uh, motorcyclists slash cyclists who watch the channel uh, this is also a really nice uh, route to cycle so if you want to come out from Kilkenny all the way out to Kilcooley lovely little cycle you can stop in Freshford to get a coffee or whatever else um, I would recommend it but I would recommend using the back roads don't use the main road out here because it sucks uh, and you'll probably get squished by something uh, going and driving badly. There's a lot of bad drivers around these days, so just be safe. And just be safe on this road, because it has stuff like this, where, you know, especially if you're carrying a pillion, uh, as I am today, you would not want to hit that too hard. Because, you know, when you're in the sad, I don't know have you ever rode pillion or have you ever carried a pillion, but the thing to remember is, with a pillion, and this is completely, uh, what is it? Unwanted advice, probably. But if you're, if you're not used to carrying a pillion, you're watching this video and you just think you might like to know because you've seen me carrying a pillion, just remember, everything needs to be smoother. So smoother acceleration, smoother braking, smoother cornering because they don't have the same level of comfort we have in the center of the bike um, as on, on the back. So you very much need to just try make all the inputs a little bit smoother so that they're as comfortable as they can be. Now, here is the start of the walls for Kilcooley which is really, really cool. So right now, this whole thing is the wall that surrounds Kilcooley, the whole, the whole way around, um, which is absolutely crazy. And that they still stand uh, pretty strong today, you know. Now, I mean, not that they're gonna hold much out these days in, in modern times, but um, the fact they're there, the fact they're still there is pretty cool. The other thing that I have noticed uh, that I think is worth mentioning is I, I've noticed there's a lot of um, kind of loose chippings and gravel around here. So you can see here, look, all the old walls. They're so cool. 
really really cool but yeah just watch out for the loose gravel on any and to be honest any kind of back road irish road you're going to run into a lot of um kind of loose stones and stuff it, it happens quite a bit uh, but you know the actual ground itself is generally the road itself is generally pretty grippy so don't be too worried about it now oh, here we are so this is the entrance itself into Kilcooley and it is of course stones a motorcyclist's enemy now it does get less stony right after the entrance but like you wouldn't want to be coming in there hot now this is the entrance itself into Kilcooley uh, estate so this is obviously not the abbey there you go no trespassing so don't just go wandering off through the woods uh, like I said you know they could close those gates if they wanted to they don't have to give the public access in here so you know just be sound about it um, and then we'll have access hopefully forever uh, to, to the Abbey itself now like I said I do hope that the OPW eventually get the finger out and actually do a little bit more to preserve the Abbey itself because it's definitely suffering just a little bit um, at the moment which you'll see yourselves very soon now just here on the right um, is where the church is so there's the church itself it's pretty cool do we park back there up around here uh, oh yeah we won't park there so oh yeah there we go and then in there is the uh, the actual Kilcooley house itself so back there on the right is the Protestant church and the abbey is down this way and you don't have a seat you can park wherever, wherever you want that provided you're out of the way and not blocking any entrances or exits we'll go as far as we can on the bike and see we get on so the Protestant church itself is quite old I'm not sure exactly how old um, but obviously that is still a uh, church that is functional and in in use so you know if you're of that religious persuasion you could also visit in there uh, on your way here all oh, right that's really cool as well we must stop back there too now do you want to hop off and I'll turn the bike around adios toaster she's abandoned us folks and there is the abbey itself okay so i might not speak as much as i was planning on speaking because there's people here you know me with people doesn't work but um in front of us is Kilcooley and there's a little beehive hut as well so that is the actual remains of the structure rebuilt after the fire like i said very little remained of the original original structure after said fire um this uh, it's been converted quite a few times so if we can get inside can we get inside at the moment basically it was actually lived in for a while so there's lots of little bits in here that were converted for you know residential living uh, it wasn't just used uh, as a monkery and um, for a lot of its life that's not the correct term but anyway um monastery. monastery yeah there you go that's the one toaster knows well educated she is not like me um so <laughs> Huh? A monkery. A monkery. <laughs> That's where they keep the monkeys. Um, so, you know, the cloister, which would have originally been a cloister, is kind of a, a walled-in garden now as well. But first and foremost, we'll pop into the beehive hut. This is where the local youths come to uh, discard their condoms and do some drugs. That's the, um, that's the uh, view from Grange. The oh, that's what I was telling them about on the way out here. So if you look directly ahead, the camera is definitely 100% not going to pick this up because it's wide angle. But straight ahead of us, there's the, the folly I was talking about is on top of that hill. So from that hill, you can see this entire area. Um, yeah. And is that, that's Kilcooley House over there then, yeah. So that's the house I was talking about, which is about... Hmm? And lake, there's a lake behind the house. See, Toaster knows more about this. She's not far from here, so she knows all the history. And I don't know if you know this, but um, Dad told me, because obviously they're not far from here as well originally. He was saying back in the day, the people who built Kilcooley House were very good to people during the famine. They actually had them build the walls in exchange for food. I think it was the walls, he said. So, yeah, there you go. So here we go into the beehive huts. I'm not sure how bright it's going to be in here for the camera. You coming in? Um, but 
Yeah, as you can see, there's the old opening. Was this used for pigeons? I think it was used for pigeons. I remember reading about it because of that opening in the roof was for the birds to get in and out. So, you know, th this is this is really cool. And again, it's it's in really good condition. Uh, apart from one of my pet peeves, always is litter. So, I mean, if you come out here and you're going to visit it, please don't litter. Please don't be a shithead because you are a shithead if you litter. I absolutely hate litter. There's no need for it whatsoever. Um, but that is the. I'm gonna call it the pigeon beehive pot thing because I'm just gonna assume it was pigeons. Pigeonry. The pigeonry, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so hopefully you're getting a good view on the 360 cam now. We just can't show you Toaster's face because people on the internet are mean <laughs> and she's afraid that she'll get bullied probably. Can you confirm that is the reason? <laughs> she's not speaking now, she's gone quiet. That section is still roofed, obviously. Then there's a lot of other bits that are not roofed and have collapsed, so several bits have collapsed, which is a pity, but what can you do? The gate looks open. I think we can go in. Sweet. Excelente. Now, like I said, um, this is owned by OPW. There's a sign right there, but in my opinion, it's not maintained nearly as well as it should be. I remember years ago, there was a wall collapse, didn't there? Oh, probably, yeah. So, this is an aerial view of Kilkuli. I'll take a better one in a minute. <laughs> and these are some of the uh, sculptures I was talking about. So, I'll just see, is the guy's name on here who did them? Rory O'Tunny, that was the man's name. Um, he, did the, he did the carvings here and also in Jerpoint. Not all of them. Um, oh, and St. Canis's Cathedral. There you go. 1526. So anyway, let's walk around. As you can see, it's a really impressive structure all together. So I'll stay quiet now and we'll just do a quick walk around and you can see all the little bits and pieces. So Toaster just pointed out the carvings up in the actual top of the arch. I can't remember what they're called either. <laughs> Arches. <laughs> So like you can see here, there's carvings here. There's obviously birds sitting on top of that one. Um, and pooping. That's quite worn down as well. And here, this poor fella's face has been smashed off. Uh, I would imagine that was probably when, because I know Cromwell did this, by the way. So if this was a Catholic tomb, which I'm not sure it is, uh, Cromwell did, his forces, not him directly, did smash off the faces of some of the people in there rather than remove the whole tomb. And there's his dog, which is cool. There's the carvings we were talking about. Most of the carvings are like hundreds of years old, yeah. Not all of them, but like these ones are probably oh, your man Otoni. And the ones over there are Otoni as well. Very impressive. So in here, as far as I learned, and there's one particular person who'll be able to correct me on this stuff, which is uh, Kaz. <laughs> So I'm pretty certain these were fire pits to eat water, um, whether they were for use for baths or for cooking. So there you go. View directly across to Kilcooley House, which is massive. Oh my God. <laughs> it's way bigger than I thought. Now I think we're blocked from the cloist. No, we can go through here. Ah, stairs. Yeah, we're blocked from the gardens. Don't know, maybe it's dangerous. So, will you come and shove that out the window? <laughs> it is the nicest part. So we're gonna show you what the gardens look like. 
shove it all the way out. Toaster is leveraging you out the gap here. Perfect though. So out there you'll see the gardens, they would have originally been cloisters and then they were converted to gardens for uh, the private people who lived here. And then they would have eventually been back to being used by the monks um, when they came back in here. But now as you can see, it's just kind of an open garden uh, surrounded by the wall. We're not sure why it's closed off. We're not sure we can't get out there. It looks like one of the walls has been supported over there. Oh, looks like one of the walls has been supported over there if you didn't hear toaster. So that's probably why for safety reasons. So maybe OPW are actually doing something with their lives. And again, you can't go much higher than here because this gate's locked. But again, if we get toaster to shove you out there, you can see more of the view. Where is the wall that's blocked off? Over to the right. So hopefully you can see that. But that, that's the garden. The gardens are, yeah, definitely one of the best parts uh, of the place. So it's a real pity we can't walk you out there. But anyway, hopefully you can see enough from Toaster's handling <laughs> of you. <laughs> now you're just being shoved in another spot. It's so handy having the 360 camera to do that. So that's more of the rooms. You can see that's the roof that's still intact and up into it. It's it, hopefully one day OPW opened the, this whole thing up. They so put a new roof there. Huh? They have restored the roof, yeah, fairly recently, I think. But hopefully one day they open the whole thing up and you'll be able to come visit and see the entire thing. I've seen more of this spot. I think this used to be open as well, isn't it? I don't think this gate to the gardens will be open either now, but you'll be able to see slightly more of them from here. Yeah, this is not even a gate, it's actually just a grate. Uh, and there is part of the wall being supported over there that you can kind of see. So hopefully that's in the process of being restored. Um, and you can see these big slanted concrete pillars with the rebar in them. They're not original. They were put in also to support the wall. I can actually see over there um, to the right, the wall, the main wall is actually pulling away from that interior wall. So that whole thing must uh, currently be in the process of collapsing. So hopefully OPW fix that before it becomes um, irreparable. If you have watched, uh, thank you very much for watching. A special thank you as always to all of my patrons. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this pretty cool old structure. Hopefully OPW actually put more money into it because it is one of the most impressive kind of old ruins that I have been to myself. There's actually quite a lot of it still functional. So it would be really cool to see it made safe so that people can visit it uh, without ruining too much of its original character. And um, you know, such as this really old beam that's across the door there. So, you know, that stuff is the kind of stuff we want to maintain. It's the kind of stuff that we want everyone to see. Um, yeah, anyway, if you want to stick to the end, I'm going to fly my drone now and show you the entirety of the grounds. Yeah, anyway, thank you again for watching. Adios. Outro.
So just as a very, very addition to the end of the video, this is the far side of that wall that they have blocked off in the garden. And they have done, like this has been like this for years. They've done absolutely nothing with it, except put a lovely little board in the middle and a fence around it, because that's going to stop the wall from falling. It's an absolute joke. So this is the, what I thought might be a storage area. Not sure what it is. But, uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool still. There's another room in beyond there. Quite damp in here. In, oh, yeah. Well, everywhere is damp in Ireland, really. A lot, well, not everywhere. Wait, this to the What's in over this wall? That's where the stairs is. Oh, so it, there is actually a full upstairs. Cool. So just beyond that wall there, there's a, a stairway up to uh, the top floor, which is pretty cool. But as Toaster said, very damp. Mold. It looks like mold, yeah. It looks very different on the camera, it's gas. This is my phone camera, by the way, so I'm not sure how this will come across, but... Giving it a test out, and Toaster was waving at me through this gate moments ago. Outro crew, give him a question, Toaster, come on. Give the outro crew a question, any question in the world. So, as always, my co-star has let me down with a question. Not you, everyone, literally every single person I bring out has failed miserably for a question. Pretty worn. No, that ruins the fun of it. Clearly, <laughs> it doesn't. It wouldn't because they just let you down without you don't have a question. Fair point, fair point. Anyway, so outro crew, crew, crew um, would you visit here or have you ever been here? Um, and are you disappointed to see it's not as open as it could be because OPW haven't invested in it yet? Look, I understand that OPW have a limited amount of funds, but this is somewhere that really should be looked at. Yeah. This is just as impressive. Yeah, and it's, it's bigger. I know it's the grounds are bigger. Closer to, it's further away from a town or whatever. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. If, if you're not here in Toaster, what she's saying is, this is just as big as your point, if not bigger. It definitely has bigger grounds. It has more to it, but your point is pristine and cared for, and this is just forgotten about. It is closer to Thomastown, but like, it's not that far. Mm. Closer to Kilkenny. But yeah, hopefully one day this will be properly maintained. But let us know, would you visit here? Anyway, bye, Ultra Crew.